It's now time for Global Insights, where we speak to experts from around the world on issues making headlines. Now, UFO sightings have been, become frequent and continuous in recent years, according to a naval intelligence officer in the United States. Now, unidentified flying objects have long been a topic that's never failed to fascinate people and provoke debates on whether these mysterious apparitions are real or not. And there have certainly been testimonies over the years, but has the evidence over the years proven concrete? We delve into the issue of unidentified flying objects with Avi Leib, Professor... Uh, Frank B. Bade, Jr., Professor of Science at Harvard University, and Ming Song Yeo, Professor of Electrical and Electronic Engineering at Wusok University. Very warm welcome to you both, and thank you for joining us today. And my first question to you, Professor Leib. Now, it's been 50 years since uh, the US Congress last held a hearing on mysterious objects in the skies. And do you think we are now confident enough to say that UFOs and aliens actually exist? I mean, what has finally been confirmed by the hearing? Well, the US government, the Congress, is uh, interested in figuring out what uh, these objects that they cannot identify mean, because uh, potentially they pose a national security threat and uh, they pose a threat to the safety of military personnel. That's the perspective of government, but science has a different perspective. Uh, for scientists, you know, if indeed one object came from outside of this earth, it's not a natural object like a bird or a rock, a meteor, but it's a technological object that came from another civilization, that would be the most important scientific discovery ever made. And of course, the second issue that comes after that is how to engage with such uh, equipment and what to do about it, who represents humanity in a sense. So the, the real development recently is that we have instrumentation that is far better than we had 50 years ago. And military personnel report about objects that they cannot associate with uh, human-made equipment or with natural phenomena. And I think it's now time for scientists to get engaged and figure them out. From the point of view of astronomy, I should say the first two interstellar objects, objects that came from outside the solar system, appeared weird. Uh, they didn't look like the rocks we saw before, like comets or asteroids. Uh, the first one was spotted in 2014. It was a meteor that landed near Papua New Guinea. And um, it was made of material that is tougher than iron. And actually, we plan an expedition to um, scoop the ocean floor for the fragments from this meteor to figure out what it was made of. And then the second object that was discovered from outside the solar system is called Oumuamua. It was discovered by a telescope in Hawaii in 2017. Uh, and again, it didn't look like a comet or an asteroid. It looked like an outlier. It had anomalies. And, you know, we better check our mailbox. Maybe there is mail from another civilization in it. Very interesting, yes. And, um, well, Professor Meng, have you found any interesting remarks made at the congressional UFO hearings? Actually, there are several interesting remarks uh, in the Congress UFO hearings. Um, I'd like to point out um, just two remarks briefly here. Uh, the first remark is uh, quadcopters and uh, unmanned aerial systems uh, coming from Scott Bray, the deputy Director of Naval Intelligence. Uh, this Congress was held mainly based on the reports uh, by the US Navy pilots. Uh, we cannot imagine that those pilots uh, misidentify quadcopters with UFOs. <laughs> as far as uh, unmanned aerial systems are concerned, the Russian hypersonic the gliding vehicle might be the only one the pilots misidentify with the UFO. Uh, the maximum speed of the system is uh, reported to be um, 25 times of that of sound when it falls straight down to the ground. Um, UFO uh, named Tic Tac is very famous, however, it was reported by US Navy radar operators to show speed of about 32 times of that of sound at the same condition in 2004 near San Diego, California. 
the second interesting remark uh, is the glowing red oak UFO uh, spotted near nuclear facilities uh, at Mar Marstrom Air Force Base appeared in the position of Congressman Gallagher. Although Scoop Bray uh, responded negatively, um, this kind of incident was uh, classic to the Air Force officials involved with uh, UFO investigations 50 years ago. Uh, indeed, this was one of the most serious issue to the Pentagon when the UFO controversies started in 1947. It seems clear uh, that even though U.S. Air Force announced that UFOs were not the matter of national security 50 years ago, the real threat from the unknown force exists in USA at present. And Professor Lei, well, these are the first hearings since the Air Force terminated Project Blue Book in 1969. And well, what could be the reason to hold an open forum now after decades of internal investigations and research? I think it's impossible for the government to ignore these objects anymore. Um, and of course, there was a lot of stigma attached to reporting, and uh, that stigma was lifted uh, because uh, ser serious officials are now discussing uh, these objects, and we need to figure them out. And I think the scientific community needs to uh, help the government figuring them out because if it's not a human-made or natural phenomena, then it's a scientific matter that doesn't adhere to national borders. And uh, I established the Galileo Project at Harvard University. We are building the first telescope system on the roof of the Harvard College Observatory in the coming weeks. And we will collect new data. We don't need to rely on jittery cameras in the cockpits of fighter jets where astronomers and scientists can build instruments that we have full control over, the sky is not classified, and we can figure out what's out there. So I think it should be part of the mainstream of science to help government and the general public that is very curious about the identity or the nature of these objects. I'm Professor Leib, another question to you. The Pentagon has so far confirmed that there were 11 near misses with UFOs by the US military. Now, has there been any contact towards or from them so far? No, uh, and the government didn't try to shoot them down, for example. Uh, you see, it's possible that it's a mixed bag, that some of these objects are manufactured by humans, and but nevertheless, they pose a threat uh, to military personnel and therefore the Congress and the government needs to deal with these objects, figure out what they are. Uh, however, from a scientific point of view, you know, we don't need to pay attention to reports that are not of the highest quality because we cannot really tell from those reports what, it, what they mean. Scientists would like to have the highest quality data possible about an object. So if we have a high resolution image, we could tell if there are screws and bolts on the object so that it's not an animal, not a, a bird, for example. We might even be able to read off the label made on exoplanet Y. So clearly good data could, should tell us what these objects are. And it's not a philosophical question. It's not a, a political question. It's a scientific question. And let's just get higher quality data and figure it out. Now, Professor Meng, now, many UFO witnesses, they speak of the rather unusual movements of UFOs, such as a rapid direction change or an unbelievably high speed as if they defy the limits of physics even. But, well, as a scientist, what makes you think that this is not human technology? Um, there are several physically understand understandable explanations for the um, uh, unbelievably strange movements of UFOs. Uh, the most probable explanation is the use of magnetohydrodynamics. Theoretically speaking, by using this physics, uh, the, aircraft, the aircraft can fly in the air without friction, um, which enables the extreme speed, very sharp turn, and uh, no sonic boom. However, human technology cannot achieve this goal, even in the lab so far. 
Um, Professor Meng, I know that you've uh, researched UFOs for about 30 years in South Korea. Were there any UFOs observed by South Koreans, um, especially particularly maybe among the Air Force pilots? Um, in South Korea, uh, Air Force pilots do not report UFO cases to government for fear of ridiculing or disadvantage. Instead, they report their cases to the civilian UFO research bodies. About uh, 25 years ago, I interviewed Air Force uh, Major who underwent UFO incident near Gerion Mountain, located uh, about 200 kilometers south of Seoul. During the training, he spotted something dropping down, uh, much like a flat, uh, falling star. However, uh, it stopped abruptly and rushed toward his aircraft. Uh, he was very startled, but calmly measured the time duration of the object taken from one point to the other point to calculate the speed of the, of the object. Uh, it, was, it was more than seven times of the speed of sound, uh, but there was no sonic boom. The UFO looked like a uh, top. Uh, this is the sketch uh, by the major. Um, Why we see that right yeah, there, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, as Korean government has shown no interest toward the UFO matter, uh, civilians uh, have founded UFO research bodies. Uh, now I'm a chief member of advisory committee of KURN, Korean UAP Research Network. Right, we actually didn't see that diagram, Professor. If you could just show it to us again on the screen there. Um, right, uh, Professor Meng, if you could just share that uh, with us again, the diagram that you showed us. We, yeah. yeah, we just missed that. So, right, yeah, there we go. Yeah, yeah. that's the one that you yeah, it's showed us. <laughs> it's and, one. Yeah. Well, it's a question of, well, how much initiative we should take, really, in finding out for ourselves, is anybody out there? Do aliens exist? So, Professor Leib, what do you think? Um, it seems that we have a long way to go until we get to the answer to that ultimate question. So, how much initiative should we take? Do you think there are actions needed from the government? Well, 70 years ago, Enrico Fermi, a famous ph physicist, um, sat at lunch at uh, Los Alamos, uh, talking with friends and uh, colleagues, and he asked, where is everybody? Now, of course, you can sit at home and uh, ask this question, but uh, the, the way to find your neighbors is by looking through your windows, and you better use a telescope. And very often, scientists say, well, this, is, this would be an extraordinary claim to say that we have a smarter kid on our cosmic block. But, and they say, therefore, it needs extraordinary evidence. But my point is, extraordinary evidence requires extraordinary funding. Uh, in order to find evidence, we need to search. And so far, the search for objects, scientifically speaking, was very limited. There was not much funding to it. We've been searching for the nature of most of the matter in the universe. We call it dark matter for uh, 90 years now, and we haven't found what it is. Billions of dollars were dedicated, and very little was dedicated to the search for equipment in space that may belong to an advanced technological civilization. Um, and the public cares about it, the government cares about it. So it's about time for the scientific community to engage. And I'm actually leading a project of more than 100 scientists where we are building our own telescope systems to assemble data and follow the evidence. Uh, because, you know, you will find wonderful things only if you're willing to look for them. And uh, Bob, on that note, Professor Leib, now with the advancement of uh, cutting edge technologies like artificial intelligence and such, are there any ways to really incorporate that into your research and really um, strengthen those research efforts? Yeah, so we are using uh, the best instrumentation available now, which is far better than used by military personnel in many of the reports that were made public. And we are assembling the first telescope system right now that includes infrared, optical, radio, and audio sensors. The data will be fed to a computer system that uses 
artificial intelligence and machine learning algorithms, state of the art, to identify the nature of the objects we see. And it's like a fishing expedition. We don't know what fish we will find. We have no prejudice. And uh, even if we clear up that all the objects are either human made or natural, that would be an important service to society because apparently the government worries about it and talks about it seriously. But it's quite possible that we find one of the objects to clearly be of technological origin and perform in ways that humans cannot reproduce. And at that point, the question is what to do about it, how to engage with it. Can we learn new technologies from our cosmic neighbors? And these are fascinating questions. It would be the most important scientific discovery ever made by humans. And the psychological shock will be similar to my daughters when they went to their the first day in the kindergarten, they thought that they are the smartest in the world, and then they saw a smarter kid on the block at the kindergarten. So humanity will realize that, you know, there might be a smarter civilization out there. In fact, Albert Einstein was not the smartest scientist that lived since the Big Bang. Uh, and we know that half of the sun-like stars have a planet the size of the Earth, roughly at the same separation and most stars formed billions of years before the sun. So it's quite possible that there were civilizations very advanced that sent equipment that some of which we will find near us. Right, and if you're interested in finding out more about the professor's research, you can also always follow him online. And also uh, we have um, the website to Professor Meng's website, I believe, um, uh, there for you on the screen there and well this is where we'll have to wrap up unfortunately due to time but this is a fascinating discussion of course and we hope to continue this in the future thank you very much Avi Leib um, professor of science at Harvard University and Ming Songyo professor of electrical and electronic engineering at Wuzhok University thank you both again so much for your time today thank you. thanks for having us